What is the best country in South America to do ayahuasca? Colombia. <laughs> okay, so this is a common question, perhaps a silly one. It's like asking where is the best food? Well, it depends. What are, what are you trying to experience? Right? If you want some wild variety, if you want some bat soup, you know where to go. But if you want the best pasta, there's a different place. Right? So, what's the best place to do ayahuasca in South America? Well, first of all, let's look at the differences, right? Because when people are asking this, what they're basically asking is, what are the differences between drinking ayahuasca in Peru or Daime or Uni in Brazil or drinking Yahe in Colombia? For those of you that do not know, these are the different names that are given to mix between this vine and this leaf that create the plant medicine commonly referred to as ayahuasca. However, what a lot of people don't know is that there are over 18 ways of preparing ayahuasca because there's a, a wide variety of the vines, right? There's some vines that according to their shape and their composition are a little bit different from one and another. One time I was talking with a shaman here in Colombia and he shared that every vine has a specific use. All of them are good for healing but some of them are good if you want to study, right? And they call it, if you want to go deep inside yourself, there's, there's a specific brew that they can create. If you want to go deep outside of yourself, explore the cosmos, there's something else, right? So, I have never tried ayahuasca in Peru or in Costa Rica or in Ecuador. So, what I'm going to share now is not from personal experience but it is from one of the shamans that we work with and his personal experience having traveled a lot and, and done conferences and held talks in a lot of uh, different communities, right? Having been trained by the authority of the ayahuasca world, let's call it, which is a uh, shaman Kerubin Keta, who is 108 years old. And from what I understand, he's the most respected shaman or one of the most respected shaman in all of South America because he's been serving medicine for, I think, over 80 years now, right? So, what's the difference? I asked once this shaman, hey, what's the difference between ayahuasca and yahe? Ayahuasca being what is served in Costa Rica and Peru and yahe being what is served in Colombia. He looked at me and he started giggling and he said, oh, ayahuasca is soft. It's easy. And I was shocked asking why he said, according to him, can be a lot more of a psychoactive trip of colors and visions and a very subtle and one of those experiences that for a lot of people are strong and memorable, but sometimes quite not enough to instill a long lasting transformation. I asked him how he will describe Yahé and he said, well, Yahé called Yahé Tigre, which is what we usually cook here in Colombia, which means Yahé Tiger, he said it, it packs a stronger punch. It usually is not as gentle with the person's body or sometimes not even the mind, because it's coming and it's coming for a purpose like a tiger, right? It's coming to rip away everything that is untrue, where that is trauma, karma, some energies that you have collected of your journey and Yahe Tiger is more confrontational. Ayahuasca is believed to be the divine mother, right? And it's like grandmother spirit. Yahe is known to have more masculine qualities. And when you drink it, you can really sense that. It's a very loving father, but also a very strict one, right? So while the mother holds you and lets you cry all that you need to and shows you that everything is okay, the father does that. But then at one point he holds your hand and tells you, all right, son, all right, daughter, there's something that you need to get. There's something that you need to learn. Right? And, and this can be difficult because a lot of people that are curious about plant medicine, 
they're, they want to have a good trip and Yahed does not guarantee that. It guarantees that the trip you have is very good for you, perhaps even more than with ayahuasca, but it does not guarantee always that it's going to be a pleasant experience because of that, because it's an energy that is very strong and it can be very confrontational. It will, it will allow you to pay close attention to everything within of you, everything inside that needs to be healed and let go of. And this is a difficult thing to do for most people. So um, these are the differences that I know. Other than that, every center, every place, every temple has its own traditions, right? There's the Shipibo, there's the Uni, there's the Inga and Kofan in Colombia. What I invite you to do, though, is to find space whose shaman and hopefully the team that is facilitating uh, to find a place that you vibe with. To do a little bit of research and understand who's the people in charge, who are the people helping you, are you just paying to come in and out, or are they supporting your preparation process and your integration process? I need to look around, I don't know, YouTube, social media, Instagram, for some testimonials, for some videos, and see the place and see what you're vibing with the people, the space, the location, and make your choice. One thing, however, I, I really encourage you and is not to do it with. I call them casual hippie facilitators. People who are good vibes and who are going to play to you music from their playlist and take this as just another psychedelic substance. They often hold mushroom ceremonies and a lot of other things, right? They are jacks of all trades and masters of none. This is very dangerous. Best case scenario, you have a good trip with them, but nothing meaningful comes out of it. However, if you're going to do ayahuasca, whether in Brazil, in Peru, in Ecuador, or in Colombia, find that the shaman leading it has been properly trained in one of the traditions, one of the indigenous traditions. And they have dedicated at least 10 years of their life to working with and hopefully serving the medicine. Some shamans will say that 10 years is not enough, but this is, this is a guideline, right? Do not go into somebody's house, somebody's cottage, and drink medicine from the hands of somebody who spent one year or a few months in the jungle. Okay, also besides that, be very careful and pay a lot of attention to how the medicine is cooked, who's cooking it, what's the process, right? A lot of people um, do not pay more a lot of attention to this and it has an impact. How strong the medicine is depends on how impeccably it was prepared which depends on how much the people preparing it knew. So ask about that. Preparation, integration, to see places of the temple, how the medicine is cooked, what tradition they're trained in and what experience they have. And after all, let your heart decide, right? Whether you want to come here doing medicine with us in Colombia or go somewhere else, let your heart be the guide because you're going to be in the right place with the right people and the right guides. However, it doesn't matter what place you're in, as long as things are done properly, it's gonna be a beautiful experience for you. So just ensure that whatever you go, you have done your due diligence. And if you end up coming to South America, let us know sharing a comment how your experience was if you come or if you have worked with us before then also you will your comments are welcome here and that's it i hope this was useful to you and we'll talk soon Agradeciendo